Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'm going to show how you can quite easily create your own scalloped squares and rectangles by using Interpolate in Inkscape. The basic design I'm going to create first is this design shown here in the middle and with a few more steps you can create a solid scalloped square or on the right here a postage stamp type design. To start the design I'm going to draw a circle. So I'll select the circle, hold down the control key so I get a circle and not an oval. Now through a lot of trial and error I've learned to turn this into an object before I do anything else. If you forget this step and get a strange result it could be the reason why. So I've got the shape, I'll go path, object to path and now I'm going to duplicate it. You can either press control D if you like using keyboard shortcuts but I like to just click on the icon and get a duplicate. So I'll just click on that. It's hard to see but I've actually got two here. Now I need to separate these so I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard as I move the circle to the right. By holding the control key it keeps it on the same horizontal line. Of course when you're doing your project you're going to space these the size that you want your finished design to be. The circle on the right is currently selected so I'll hold down the shift key on the keyboard and select the left circle. Now they're both selected I can move on to the next stage. So I'll go extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And now I've got some more options. Steps, at the moment it's set at 8. Now if I leave that at 8 it's going to give me 8 new circles. So this is the number you're going to change to fill this space in between. Interpolation method, I'm leaving at number one. Now duplicate end paths, this is optional. You can either tick it or leave it unticked. If I do decide to duplicate it, it will actually give me another two circles here. I'm going to leave that box unticked and then I'm just going to tick on live preview. I'll leave it at eight and see what happens. I can see here that 8 is not going to be enough. So I can just use these arrows and I'll just start increasing it. Because I've got live preview ticked, I'm going to see the changes as they happen. And I think 12 looks about right for what I want. So I'll click on apply. And I'll just close the box. I can see here that even though the first circle and the last circle were perfectly in line. My new circles are not, but that's easy enough to fix. So I'll just click on them. If you see down here, they are a group. So I need to ungroup them before I can do anything else. So I just like to click on the icon for ungroup. Then I'm just going to drag the mouse around and select all of them. And I'll just use alignment to put these all on the same line. So let's just open alignment. And in the section align, I'm just going to click on this one here. You can see the red line is at the bottom, so they'll all align at the bottom of each circle. So I'll just click on that. We can see they've all lined up. To do the next stages, I need these to stay together. All I'm going to do at this stage is group them. And it should make sense why I'm using group a little bit later on. So I'll just group them. So there's one side of my scallop square. So I'm going to duplicate this. So I'll just click on the icon and duplicate. Then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now up here are two little icons. This one will rotate it counterclockwise and this one will rotate it clockwise. It doesn't matter which one I click on. Zoom out a bit. There we are, it's rotated. Now I need this to line up with this one at this top corner. So the easiest way is to select the other one. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and click on the other set of circles. I'll open alignment. What I'm going to do then is align them to the top. So I'll just click on this second one on the bottom row of align. Let's move up so we can see where it went. So we can see that they've both aligned to the top. Now I'm going to align them to the left. So I'll just move to the icon above that one. And see where it says align to the left edges? I'll click on that. So now I've got half of my shape. 
So I'll group them, then I'll duplicate. Now I need to rotate these around here. So I'll click on rotate 90 degrees, then click again and rotate 90 degrees. And there we have the basic shape. Now if you recall earlier on, I said these were grouped. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this and I'll show you what the difference is. As the one on the right selected, I'll work on this first. Down here we can see there's two objects and they're grouped. Basically I group twice, so I'm going to have to ungroup twice. So I'm going to click on the icon twice to ungroup. You can see how I've now got lots of little circles. What I'm going to do is come up to each corner and delete. When I rotated, these are actually doubled over. So there's actually two circles in each of these corners. Now, whether you do this or not depends on how fussy you are. I like to delete them if I plan on keeping this file and using it multiple times. Now, I've still got individual circles and if I cut these out, I'm going to have pretty much confetti on my cutting mat. So I'm just going to drag the mouse around everything and I'm going to apply path union. That will now cut out in one piece. You can see here that I've got one path with 208 nodes. I'll just move to this one on the left and I'll ungroup it. So it has to be ungrouped twice like the other one. This time I'm not going to move the circles from the corner. I'm just going to go path union. Now let's compare the two of them. It hasn't really made too much difference on this one, but if you're using shapes other than circles, you might find a big difference. Quite often when you have two of the same shape sitting on top of each other and you apply path union, you will get a lot of nodes on this particular one. So we can see here we've got this little cluster of nodes and here we've got a little cluster of nodes. Now let's have a look at the other one. Click on it. We can see I've only got one node at each point. And that was why I used group. So it allowed me to then delete them. And I'll just show now how easy it is to change it to a solid design. Let's move this to the left. We can keep that one. With this one, I'll select it. And I'll go path, break apart. Then I'll just click onto a blank part of the canvas and then click back onto the shape and just drag it aside. Now I've got a solid scallop square and I've got a postage stamp type design. And there we have it in a few easy steps, scallop squares.